Welcome back to Cloud 42, I'm James. We are getting to the time of year when my schedule gets crazy, and this year much more so than normal. I'm gonna be taking a road trip here later this week for graduation and to see my son before he enlists in the Army. As soon as I get back from that, the same day, I've gotta catch a plane and fly out for a week-long business trip for my day job. And as soon as I get back from that, I gotta go pick up a couple of pork butts, get them in the smoker for my grandpa's 95th birthday party. And on top of all that, I have jury duty this week. So as you can imagine, that is going to seriously cut into my shop time. However, I don't wanna leave you guys hanging. So this is just gonna be a short video looking at a preview of the next project we have coming up here in the shop, which is a hand scraper. Now, I have long wanted to get into scraping, and I've got several Chinese machine tools that could certainly use a little bit of help, but I have something a lot simpler in mind for a first scraping project. This is an inexpensive import surface gauge that I picked up about a year ago, I, I think from Shars. And uh, you, you've seen me use this with a dial indicator, a tense indicator on the surface plate to inspect parts before. I think the uh, edge finding tool for the mill, I use this to do some measurements with gauge blocks on the surface plate. And you know, it's all right for an import surface gauge. The biggest problem with it is that the bottom of it is not flat. So I blued this up just with a Sharpie. You know, this is nothing, nothing exotic. I just blued the bottom up with a Sharpie and set it on my surface plate and rubbed it around a bit just to see how flat the bottom really was. You can see that the answer is it's a little bit of a horror show. Um, you can see a really nice, bright, shiny spot where it's hitting really hard right here, and it's hitting really hard right here along the edges. You get nice, bright, shiny metal. And the rest of it is quite a bit, uh, quite a bit depressed. This whole, these big areas of blue you can definitely see, and even these other areas that are kind of largely wiped off, they're not wiped off by much. It just barely took the, the Sharpie off. So this is, this is really uh, not great. And the biggest problem that this causes is that on the surface plate, depending on exactly the conditions, I get a little bit of rock. And you know, because you know, we have, the, it's basically a tripod, right? We've got a kind of a point here and a high point here and one high point here. So if I put any pressure down on this corner or this corner, the whole piece rocks and that introduces errors. I can rock it two, three tenths on the surface plate, which is you know not a huge deal, but if I'm really trying to get precise measurements and do inspection, this is really not gonna work. So I'm thinking that this surface gauge would make an ideal first scraping project. There's not a lot of area, so it shouldn't be super time consuming, but at the same time, it'll give me a chance to practice and learn the techniques and try it out on something that you know, frankly, isn't a huge loss if I end up destroying it instead. But before I do any scraping, I'm gonna to need to build a scraper. Here we are in Fusion 360, uh, looking at the scraper design. Some of you will recognize this as a Sandvik style scraper. Has a long, uh, mild steel shank with a, a nice contour grip handle at one end and a carbide insert to do the scraping at the other. Let's start out here at the business end where the carbide attaches to the shank. This is the carbide insert that I'm gonna use for my scraper. This is a Sandvik 620-2520. And this is a carbide scraper designed specifically for Sandvik's line of uh, hand scrapers. Now, these can be a little bit hard to find. They're normally sold in boxes of five for a list price a little north of $300. Now, I only need one for my scraper, and unless I do something dumb and, and break it or put a serious chip in it, one scraper is gonna be a lifetime supply for me because I'm not rebuilding a lot of machines. Uh, so I went out and found, I managed to find a few boxes for a little bit less, and I uh, went ahead and picked them up. I needed a scraper for me. I've got a friend who's building one. I got one for him. And I figured I can always sell the, uh, sell the individual inserts to other people who, like me, only need one. Uh, long story short, I listed them on eBay and they are all gone. I've been looking around trying to find some more uh, at a reasonable price. 
Right now, all of the suppliers that I've found have them back ordered. If I manage to find some more by the time this video goes live, there will be a link down in the description and I'd be happy to hook you up with one. Now these inserts are about 20 millimeters wide. They're just, they're marketed as 20 millimeters, but it looks like they're just over 20 millimeters wide. And they are about two and a quarter millimeters thick. Now the length isn't, uh, isn't critical in any way, but they're just under 25 millimeters long. And the reason I say that is because the end of this is gonna be sharpened and resharpened, and this thing's gonna continually get shorter as it's used. And it's gonna have a little bit of a radius on the end, so the length really isn't that critical. Now the geometry on this, let me see if I can get this so you can actually see it. I think you can see that the end of this insert is actually ground to a negative five degree angle. And there's a negative five degree angle on the top, and the bottom, so the, uh, the insert's reversible. Now, sharpening it in that way gives it uh, a very kind of a blunt edge with a very clean and strong edge on the carbide to get a good uh, scraping action. But as we use this, we're gonna have to resharpen it. And in fact, we're probably gonna wanna regrind it and put a smaller radius on the end of this anyway. Now we're definitely not gonna be able to grind this with an ordinary bench grinder. We're gonna have to grind this with diamond. And so to do that, I picked up some diamond lapping plates. These are all over eBay and they're not very expensive. So I got a 600 grit, 1500, and a 3000 grit uh, lapping plates. And all these are is just a round piece of steel that's about, let's see, how big are these? They're about 150 millimeters or six inches. And on one side, they have a very fine diamond abrasive. This again is 3000 grit, so it's very, very smooth. So I'm not sure exactly how we're gonna set these up. Either we're gonna go pick up an inexpensive bench grinder and make some arbors to hold these, or I might even use the um, induction motor that I took out of the lathe when I put in the VFD. We'll see, that'll be a future project. The insert mounts into the shank with a, a simple clamping mechanism. Let me get some things out of the way, the screw and the washer and the, the clamp itself. And now you can see the insert sits into a little step here uh, that's milled into the end of the shank. And because the edges of the, uh, the, the insert are, are rounded, this isn't straight. It looks pretty straight here, but it has cutting edges on both ends and they're actually ground to a radius. And we'll probably be changing that radius for different kinds of scraping jobs. Uh, and because of that, the, the back edge of this can't be flat. And there's lots of ways to do this. I've seen them with little square ledges that stick out and then a rectangular recess. Or if you're working on this on a, on a mill where you don't have CNC capability, there's, there's lots of ways to do this. You could use a big end mill, you could use a rotary table. There's multiple ways to cut this so that it's not actually square. I actually have a CNC machine, so as long as I have that, I might as well cut these with some nice curves. So this is set up to provide support on the bottom side of the insert and a curved surface so that when the insert is in here, it's actually gonna bear back on two points. Here on each end will give it nice square bearing and good support. And then to hold it in, there's a clamp that sits on top. Now the clamp is uh, relieved on the bottom, and again, because I can, and because I have CNC, I'm gonna go ahead and mill a curved bevel on the front edge. It's not really needed. You could do this even on a belt sander if you wanted, or even with a file in the vise. Um, but I have the CNC, so you know, smoke them if you got them kind of situation here. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make this nice with a nice interpolated curve and a bevel in the top with a ball end mill. Uh, the most important part of this is this recess that's cut out of the bottom. And the reason there's a recess there is so that we can get good bearing so that the clamp doesn't bottom on the handle. It has support in the back. And then when the screw clamps it down, it bears directly on this insert and gets a good solid uh, clamping force on it. Now any forces from scraping are gonna be against this edge, forcing this back in and trying to lift it up. So we need good solid clamping support to hold it down. And we've got the two uh, solid bearing points 
uh, behind it to keep it from sliding back and that should make for a very firm uh, fixture that holds that securely. At the same time, it's just held down with a washer and screw so it should be uh, very quick and easy with an Allen wrench just to loosen this, pop the insert out to flip it around, flip it over, or take it over to a wheel for sharpening. This is the material that I'm going to use for the scraper shank. Now this is just a mild steel cold finished flat bar. It is 20 millimeters wide and 4 millimeters thick. Now this is quite a bit thinner and quite a bit more flexible than the shank on the actual Sandvik scraper, which is, you know, that design is many, many, many years old at this point. Um, but from everything that I've read, you really want your scraper handle to be a little bit more flexible than those Sandvik scrapers, which are very rigid, and even the uh, Anderson tubular scrapers. And so I decided to go with this, again, from what I've read and from what I've seen from other people who've built scrapers, this 4 by 20 millimeter mild steel really is a very good compromise in terms of flexibility. You can see if I can show this. You can see that there's a little bit of flex to it but it's still quite rigid. So I should be able to get a good solid scraping action, but still have some flexibility to help limit the chatter. Now I had to order this material. Um, none of my local suppliers carry metric uh, steel, uh, metric dimension steel bar. So I ordered this from McMaster Car and a you know, three foot, one meter-ish length is about $10. So it wasn't a big deal but no place around here locally carries metric steel. So I had looked at some you know, standard imperial sizes to see if I could find something else that would work. And I could get, you know, 20 millimeters is pretty close to three quarters of an inch wide, but the thickness is the real issue. I couldn't find anything that was close enough to four millimeters to have uh, similar flexibility. I could get one eighth, but that was gonna be really springy. One quarter is you know, something you would build a bridge out of. Um, but the, the, there was also 3 16th, which on paper is, you know, still quite a bit stiffer than this, but, you know, maybe workable. But again, I couldn't find anybody locally that had that either. So I just went ahead and ordered this material and uh, we'll see how this works out in terms of balance for flexibility. I think this is going to be good. The handle on the scraper is just patterned after a, a file handle. In fact, this particular one I contoured based on a screwdriver that I have that I really like the, the fit in my hand. But the back of the shank of the scraper has a tapered tang on it, very much like you would with any kind of a machine file. And then the handle has a tapered hole in it, and it's just forced over the tang on the back of the scraper shank to, to a, a tight fit. Now. I'm going to 3D print this because I have a 3D printer and given the tools that I have, that's the easiest way for me to make a contoured part like this. And I've made a number of handles for my files and as long as you use a decent material like PETG, they're very durable and they stand up to shop use. So I think that's going to work great. Um, but you don't have to do that. You could make one of these out of wood. Uh, you could just buy a, a commercially available file handle and size the tang on the back of your scraper shank to fit. So you just pound it on and it sticks and everything's great. Now, part of the reason that I want to 3D print this is because I have a little bit different attachment mechanism in mind. I'm actually going to put a threaded insert into the back of the handle that attaches through onto the, the tang of the, uh, the scraper body. And the reason that I want to do this is so that I can have a flat metal bearing surface on the back of the handle that's threaded for attachment. So I can put a big round plate on the back of this so that I can bear against it with my bicep or my stomach or my chest, just depending on the, the posture of the scraping job, so that all of the force of the scraper isn't on the palm of my hand and isn't going through my grip and, and, and my wrist. I can actually get into a situation where I'm holding onto the shank with both hands to guide it and then providing the scraping force by leaning on the back of the scraper. Now the way this works and the way this attaches is I'm going to turn a portion of the back of the tang here cylindrical and then thread it uh, 1 quarter 28 and then turn this insert on the lathe so that it goes through the back of the handle and screws down with a screwdriver slot on the back here to tighten it. 
Now it sh will have a shoulder that'll bear into uh, a shoulder, a register in the back of the handle. So tightening this down will then draw the handle onto the tapered shank and pull it down tightly and at the same time form a rigid mechanical connection through to whatever I put on the back. Now I think the uh, the most challenging part of, of making this uh, scraper body is going to be turning the end of this and threading it. Because this material is so thin and because there's such a long piece that has to be held in the lathe and because these are interrupted threads, I think of all the machining I have to do, this is the part that's probably the riskiest, uh, most likely to go wrong and cause me to revisit the design. So this is the part that I think I want to do first. Just so if anything goes wrong, I don't have time and effort invested in a lot of other work that's going to get scrapped. Unfortunately, I have run out of time today, so we're going to have to work on that next time. If you are enjoying these videos, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.